Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, I'm Taryn and I'm going to be setting up my bullet journal for the month of May. And this time I'm my theme is going to be Yemen. So I'm going to research the country and set it up inspired by Yemen. So if you saw the video where I made the choices for the three country choices for May, um, you'll see that I pulled out Yemen and I really had no idea about the country itself as I didn't know at all what I would explore. Um, so it made it quite interesting and fun to research because everything was new to me. So I'll try and share what I found and what I discovered along the way and we'll get started with the setup. So a little background on the country itself. Um, the position, the location of Yemen is in the Southern Arabian Peninsula. So Western Asia, and it's about the same size as Oman, which is right next door, which I have actually done a previous setup of Oman in last October. So I thought that I'd find something similar being as they're so close together. But once again, I'm amazed by the differences between each country, even though places are next to each other, they just have their unique identities. So I'll try and describe some of its uniqueness to you today. So starting with what I chose for the cover, I found these amazing trees that are only found in an island called Socotra, which is off of the coast of Yemen. So it's still considered part of Yemen. And the, on this island is just like this natural paradise full of wildlife and flora and fauna that are just unique to this one island. And there's these trees that are just incredible. They look like this, what I'm painting. They are called dragon blood trees and they just look alien. They don't look like they're from earth, I think. Um, and that's how they've been described as well because they're just so unique. So all the branches just come underneath and they're just so thickly dense with these branches. And then there's just these spiky bush like leaves on top and they just look really bizarre. And the reason they're called dragon blood trees as well is the sap is red. So you'll only find these on Socotra along with some other very unusual species as well that are endemic to Socotra, like the cucumber tree. I'll put an image of that here because I didn't end up getting that into the spread itself. But yeah, I was just so taken aback by these bizarre looking umbrella trees that I thought they should have front and center position on the cover page, literally in the center. Um, so I just thought it would be very cool to see these in real life. So I thought I would plan this spread as if I were traveling through Yemen and I've landed on Socotra Island and I've just been absolutely astonished by these trees. So I'm just resting beneath them, looking up and questioning probably all of the questions we ask about the world and where do things come from and how did these get here? Because yeah, I think they would bring up all sorts of questions for you because how can they just be in this one spot? Why is no other tree looking like this? It just boggles the mind. Now I'm using gouache for this cover page. I have been loving using gouache lately and my last Finland cover was using the same products. So it's, uh, all the products are always listed down in the description box if you're ever interested in what I'm using. But I was really happy with the colors that I could create using the gouache. I wanted this really sort of burnt, earthy terracotta color to represent that sort of um, rocky, sandy desert vibe in the base. And then I've got a lovely pale blue, which I had to go over a few times to get the right kind of blue. I really wanted a nice pastel, almost lilac-y touch to it um, that just felt very soft and inviting. So I really like how these three colors are working together on the cover page. Um, and then I've drawn my, to get the position for my girl, I, I normally need a reference for when I'm drawing um, people in general so I just prefer working from a reference and I couldn't find well I, in fact I didn't even bother looking for one in that position because I knew it would be impossible like finding girl looking up and with feet out so I just sat on the ground took a photo with my phone and used myself as a reference um, to get the right position and that made my life a lot easier to be honest so I'll do that in the future as well um, but yeah so then I just drew myself with just outlines I like to leave her um, un uncolored it just kind of adds another dimension to the artwork I think it makes it a bit more illustrative and then so I thought I would do the same with a chameleon so this guy is a Socotran chameleon which sadly is near threatened species of chameleon on Socotra. Um, but I wanted to illustrate him because he is endemic and I really love chameleons in general. I think they're very cool. 
Um, so I thought I would illustrate him in a similar way to the girl and just keep him blank with just the lines. So just using a little bit of stippling and hatching to create some dimension there. But I really like how that turned out and sort of made it a little bit quirky, I think. Now, once I was happy with my illustration, I decided to, don't worry, I scanned it in first um, uh, because this part is always scary for many people. Um, and then I cut it in half and put it in my journal. But just so you know, I do spend a lot of time on the cover pages, but I'm perfectly happy cutting them up and sticking them into my journal because the journal is something I'm going to keep forever anyway. So by having that in there, it's a real nice thing to look back on, um, see how you've improved in your skills and just remember good times of when you were, you know, painting that that time. <laughs> I really like it. So it doesn't faze me about putting the originals into this book. Um, I know that I'm going to keep it forever. So it's good. Um, so yeah, once I cut it in half, I felt like it needed just a little something and I do love my gold. So I put a little bit of washi tape down the left hand side and put the M up the top corner for May. And as you'll notice here in the final shot, I have also made dividers for this month. So I'll talk those out as I go. But yeah, I basically cut down about five or six dot sections, grid sections, and cut in about four grid sections, and then just did that all the way down for about six pages. And then that gives me the tabs that I can easily flick to throughout the month. And now we're moving on to the second page, which is my calendar spread. So the calendar spread, I normally like to do the national animal of the country that I'm studying and the national animal I was super excited with for Yemen. It's actually the Arabian leopard. And one, I love leopards. I love all the wild cats. So I was super excited to be able to draw this guy. Um, I also love the color choices because it kind of keeps everything in that real earthy kind of vibe. So I, what I did was I just used a little tiny bit of um, my gouache mixed in with a little bit of water and I've just added that over the top of my sketch of the leopard and then after that was dry went in with the detail using my fine liners. Unfortunately these guys are also critically endangered um, so it's, it's kind of nice to be able to celebrate them by putting them into the journal and hopefully for me they won't be forgotten. On this page, I also included some illustrations of a particular plant. Now this plant is called cut. Traditionally, this was used for medicinal purposes, um, but also recreationally. And it has increased in the recreation side of things a lot. It's, it's, the leaves are chewed and it gives a euphoric effect and it's a stimulant drug basically. So it's grown a lot in Yemen um, and unfortunately it uses a lot of the water to grow this plant. And then because so much of the population chew the plant and need it to sort of survive as they're addicted to it, um, it means that there's less water and less food for everybody. And it's actually pushing the country into very close to famine. So yeah, unfortunate. And if you want to read more about this country, um, I'll leave some links to some articles that I found and discovered. So yes, I'm really unfortunate about the country, but I'm trying to keep it as light as possible. Um, because yeah, we don't want to get upset. But yeah, if you do want to learn more about the effects this is having on the country, I'll leave some things down in the description box. But now moving away from that, I am also using my gold pen to make this spread come to life. I kept it all very simple in the black and white and then a tinge of gold. And I've gone for an Arabic style font as well, which I think always is nice to tie in a certain style to each country. I feel like I can, I can relate a country to a font in a particular way. So I've tried to do that Arabic style font throughout. Um, and then also down the bottom, I thought I would write the words Arabian Felix, which is actually the Latin name for Yemen, and it means happy or flourishing Arabia. Um, and that's because of its beautiful rich soils that were discovered early on. So that's why it got its Latin name, Arabia Felix. And just a side note, the cat could be called Felix. He is Felix the Arabian Leopard, yes. Now each of the tabs I'm trying to tie in with the theme on that particular page. Um, so, but I also kind of want it to not be too bold that it takes away from the cover page. So I'm just keeping that in mind each time. So this one, I just did some gold leopard spots onto a black background. And those two colors are on the front on each spread. So 
So the next page is the page where I do my needs and wants list. So this I do every month because it helps me to really filter down whether I want something necessary or something that I would just love to have. So I like to keep these separate and to be honest, I don't, I haven't been filling them out a lot lately. I guess that's because my needs and my wants are just um, diminishing and it maybe is helping me to become more of a minimalist, which I do like to sort of follow that kind of general guide. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so I thought I would use a product that's quite um, famous within Yemen culture and that is the Yemenite silversmithing. So these products are basically silver jewellery that was created by the Jewish silversmiths from roughly the 18th to the 20th century because of the unique detail that they had, like the filigree and just the really precise details on everything. I thought they looked really beautiful and thought it would be perfect for on this needs and wants page. It's obviously jewellery. When do you ever really need it? But it's lovely to have, isn't it? So I thought I would put that on here. So I've just found um, a couple of pieces that I really liked and then I didn't really copy those. I just sort of used them as inspiration and then just created um, a couple of pieces that would work with those boxes where I'm going to put my needs and wants. And then I'm keeping it quite simple. I'm only using my Pigma Micron liner and then just a touch of color at the end to tie it into the meal planner, which is on the opposite side of the page. Now, just starting to talk about the meal plan because I found this fact super interesting. And if you are a coffee drinker out there, I think you'll find it interesting too. It turns out that the national flower for Yemen is coffea arabica, which is actually the very first coffee to be cultivated. It was started here in Yemen, which is amazing. I feel like there's a fact about coffee in every place that I visit. Um, but yeah, so I found that really interesting that coffee can all be pinpointed back to this place um, that we all knew nothing about really. And yeah, so Yemen, you can thank for your coffee, your mid-morning coffee. <laughs> Now, if you don't know, I'm not a coffee drinker myself, but I really do want to become one. I like the idea of going to have a coffee. So if I do ever order something, I will order a mocha, which is like a blend of, you know, chocolatiness with coffee. And that seems to seems to get me able to finish it. Um, but another interesting fact about Yemen is that mocha is actually the port city of where coffee trade began around somewhere in the 1400s. So the beans that came from the port city of Mocha were now called Mocha beans. And I think that these beans were actually like sweeter in flavor. And, and then when they were getting, you know, shipped everywhere, going into all of the European countries, it was only natural that they would get likened to chocolate, which was also big in trade at the time. So this Mocha bean naturally just eventually took on a chocolatey flavor. And I think that's why we now get um, chocolate and coffee mixed together in like a pretend faux mocha bean from Yemen. So yeah, who would have thought that your local coffee place where you probably go lots to get your coffee all originated from this little old Yemen. So I was very interested by that and I thought I would make that the central piece of my meal planner setup page. So I've just drawn the leaves of the coffee Arabica, I can't say that quickly, coffee Arabica beans and leaves and the berries that come from the national plant as well. So I just felt like I needed to add some color to this spread. So I used just the coffee sort of brown color and then a green. And then later on, I actually come back to this and realized that I just wanted something more on there. It just felt a little bit bland. So I added a little bit more color. I put in like a berry colored um, for those berries down the bottom from the plant itself and then just tied that in on the silver side. So in hindsight, probably didn't need to, but I just keep going, don't I? And I just keep adding. So I added the color and then I left it. <laughs> and now I'm moving on to my favorite spread of each setup. It's where I get to do a little bit of a portrait. Um, and that's what's nice about these setups because I get to practice everything. I get landscapes, buildings, um, plants, animals, and I get to do people as well. So it kind of covers all bases for your art skills. And that's one of the reasons why I like to put so much time into these because it is helping with my practice. Um, so yeah, the person I chose to do for my mind map page. Oh, and if you're not aware, my mind map is just a fancy word for brain dump. This is where I put all the 
thoughts that I have throughout the month, something that doesn't have a spot to go, I'll write this on this page. So I like to um, keep one side free and then the other side is going to be a portrait. So the lady that I chose for this portrait is a lady called Tawakal Karman. She is a journalist and a human rights activist that's actually won the Nobel Peace Prize back in 2011. She was also the youngest at the time and the very first Arab woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize. All I've read is good things about this lady and her work in trying to get women and children into a better position within Yemen and really around the world. She just dreams of equality and really pushes for peace and yeah, what better thing is there than to dedicate your life to trying to help others and for everyone to have a fair chance. So I was, you know, very inspired by that and really wanted to show her in this spread for my mind map. Now I am not a very political person and I'm not a religious person at all. So I always try and steer clear of those subjects on my channel, but I do feel it would be ignorant to not mention the conflict that's happening in Yemen right now and has been since 2015. Um, I won't go into too much detail. If you want to read more about it in the description box, I'll leave a link to what's happening over there. But unfortunately, the poor country is really, really in a bad way. There is war going on. They are close to famine. People are dying left, right and centre. And it was really upsetting actually reading into a lot of it. Um, but so all I can't do much from my my little home here in Perth um, but what I can do is just try and contribute a little bit so I've decided to try and help the efforts that this lady Tawakal Karman and lots of others are trying to help with Yemen by just donating the proceeds that I or the the money that I get from this video from you guys watching it I'm just going to donate that to UNICEF because yeah the, the children are really suffering over there and yeah it was just quite upsetting to look at so if I can do some small part I will so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to donate the proceeds of this video to UNICEF and if anyone else wants to donate um, after they've done a re done research on the country and just the how dire the situation is if you feel like donating you can as well I'll leave a link down there um, but yeah, so I, I just felt like I couldn't ignore the fact that there's, you know, really serious situation going on over there. And although I'm talking about the best aspects of it, I just felt bad to ignore that. So that's why I thought I'd mention it here. Um, so if you want to help, feel free. I will do my best and give the little amount that I will earn from this video to them just to help in some way. Um, yeah, and now I will move on to happier topics and try and focus on the beauty that is found in Yemen. And my weeklies will also focus on some of like the the aesthetic beauty of it. I mean, this country is beautiful. Um, so yeah, I'll try and focus on some of that in my weeklies. And for now, we will keep moving on with the setup. Okay, so now I am using some washi tape to decorate this page. I used Prismacolor pencils to do the face and I like to do that as realistic as I can. Um, so I worked on that and then what I did with the hijab is I've decided to do that, make it look like a fabric. So I'm using some washi tape to form the fabric of the hijab and then I go away with my X-Acto knife, um, my little cutting tool and go around the edge. But my advice is to go softly. I must have been distracted at the time because I ended up pressing too hard and actually cut through into the page, which was yeah very upsetting and I was like, oh my God. How am I going to fix that? Um, but I ended up, it, it's okay. I, I basically, if this happens to you, if you ever do this, um, well, how I fixed it was just using clear sticky tape over the top and then just running your knife along that clear sticky tape just really close by the, the cut itself. Um, and then it sort of hides it as much as possible. So if you see a little bit of shininess down in that right hand side, that's what that is. That was my my little accident <laughs> and uh, but yeah it's not too bad so then I continued with the washi tape running it all the way around and cutting it where it needs to show the shape of the hijab and then around her face and then to blend it in to make it look more like it was an actual fabric um, what I did was just use my Prismacolor pencils to show where the folds in the fabric are and I think that made it seem a little bit less stuck on because um, right now it looks really flat and you're not quite sure what it is. But by adding those folds of fabric in with the Prismacolor pencil, it worked great to make it look more like it was actually 
you know, a, a piece of fabric over her. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. I might try and do that more often if I, if I get the chance to do it more on um, clothing. I think it looks really, really cool. And now to really bring some impact to this page, I thought it would look nice having a background color. So I went for black and I think this really just made it pop out. So just on the left hand side, I colored it all in just a black marker, um, water based of course, because um, any alcohol based markers do go through the paper or pretty much anything. So yeah, this is a water based marker and I tried to go over it a couple of times to try and get rid of any streakiness. And then we were finally left with a nice bold black area. And then I used my favorite gold pen to write the words mind map. And then I think I got distracted again and just kept adding like I sometimes do if I'm not really thinking about things, I'll just keep adding. So I added some background leaves in that were reflective of what was in the washi tape and there's some dots and sparkles. <laughs> so I just kept going really. And then I'm adding the divider in over on the other side using that same washi tape as like a little tab just to tie it all together. And now moving on to the next page, which is my goodliness spread. This is where I track all my good habits and I usually keep one side free, ready for the little mini calendars of where I can cross things off. And then on the left hand side, I've decided to draw an amazing place called Da Alaja. And it's, that means um, stone house or a rock palace. And this is actually an old palace from uh, back in the 1920s, I think it was built. And it sits on top of another structure that was built in 1786. And it was in the royal family for all these years, but it's now a museum. And I just thought it was such a cool building. I don't even know how someone would build something like this, where it's just sort of nestled on top of a boulder almost. It's just, yeah, really impressive. <laughs> What I do love about what I've seen in the imagery of Yemen is the architecture. It's really interesting. Like all the all the stonework is usually that um, that sort of rustic stone, and then there's these beautiful detailed um, white like cornices around everything. I don't know what they're called, but like the framing of the windows and um, yeah, just like these details in the in the work. It almost makes me think of like gingerbread house or something. Like it's white icing on top of gingerbread bricks. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sure there's a proper architectural term for it, but I am not sure what that is. But I really liked it. And I, I was tempted to do this page in color for that reason. So you could see the white sections, um, but I'm sure I'll find an image to put on screen um, for you to have a quick look at what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, but it just makes me think of gingerbread and tasty rustic treats with, with nice white icing. <laughs> I really love drawing like architecture, especially in fine liners in my bullet journal. I find it really um, quite like quite effortless and sort of just relaxing because there's not a lot of you, you, you're not trying to get a realism from it. Um, so you don't need to worry too much and you can just kind of draw lines here and there and it just gives the effect of like the buildings look that you're trying to capture. Um, and then I found on this one, I always love to include a little bit of gold to try and separate the natural elements out from the architectural. So I did the, um, there was a cactus a lot around this particular place, the Dar Al Haja. Um, so I chose to do some cactuses in front or cacti in front um, in gold and then just a few little shrubs in the background as well. Um, and I just think that always makes a piece look more interesting to me. Now, like I said, I used to build these calendars by hand, but now I actually just have, have them on the computer and I can just quickly print them out and it just saves a lot of hassle for that part of the trackers because it is a lot of numbers to write. So I just printed that out and stuck it in on the right hand side. And then I think my mind just ran away with me and I was just playing around and I started doing some patterns around like a border around that printout. Not sure if I'm in love with it, um, but I just kept going because it was fun and I was just like hoping it would end up nice. Um, yeah, I'm not hugely in love with it, but it works. Uh, but yeah, gold makes everything better anyway. So I just did some gold flecks around some little stardust and wrote the word goodliness. And now my habits are ready to track.
Now to the final page of the monthly setup, which is my week one, where I dedicate spaces for each day and then plan out my daily to-do lists, my agenda for each day, every day. So this one is sort of similar to what I just mentioned in the previous spread about the architecture in um, Yemen. So the capital city of Yemen is a place called Sana'a and Sana'a's buildings, like I said, reminded me of gingerbread. Um, but one of the distinctive features of the architecture, which makes it so stunning, is these windows. They're stained glass windows called Kamaria windows. I think I said that right. Um, but they're all these beautiful arched windows that go on top of pretty much every other standard window that just really makes the makes the building look so interesting and just unique. The word Kamaria actually comes from the word Kamar, which means moon. The idea is that they want the moon's beauty to be reflected on the inside of the home. And with these dancing lights from the, all the multicolored facets of glass, it would really make that effect inside. And apparently if you walk the streets at dusk in Sana'a, you'll actually feel like it's a fairy tale because of all the colored lights falling down onto the walls and just around you on the street. So it sounds pretty magical to me. So I thought I could try and reflect that in these pages by making the windows, the boxes where I do my checklists for my agenda and things like that. So on this first page, I'm creating a pattern and the actual shape of a window and then using just my Pigma Micron to try and carve out those ornate and geometric sort of patterns that they do with the stained glass. That was actually tricky to do because obviously it relies on symmetry and that's always hard to do when you're just winging it. So I just did my best and then tried to color in areas of the glass and the pieces just where I felt it needed some color. So it definitely needed color to reflect that whole stained glass idea, but I didn't want it to be too strong of a color and too vibrant. So I chose a nice metallic gold, of course, a nice metallic reddish sort of color that I had, uh, kind of turned out a little bit more pinky than I would have liked. Um, and then I thought, which in hindsight, I wish I did this differently. I thought I would add some washi tape to this page as well, just to add some color and some vibrance to it because it was looking a little bit flat. Um, so I added some washi tape in areas just to make it pop. And in hindsight, I really wish I had done this as the stained glass. So I actually use just one chunk of washi tape up in that arched area and then cut around it. That would have saved a lot of time of drawing the sym symmetrical shapes within there. So if you happen to want to try this at home in your bullet journal, I recommend using one of your, if you have a washi tape that has like ornate patterns on it, it's already done for you. Like the one I'm using would have been ideal just to do the actual stained glass from the washi tape. So that would be a little cheat if you wanted to try this at home. <laughs> And then the last thing I do on this page, which is new for me, is I recently ordered a stamp from No Issue and I'll leave a link to their website down in the description box. Um, but I, I really love it. It's a stamp that's got um, like a soy based ink and it's made from wood and then you can just upload your own design for it. And I thought I would create a little stamp that allows me to keep track of my water intake. So if you guys have been watching me for a while, you'll know that my habit trackers are ridiculous and I cannot, for the life of me, drink eight glasses of water a day or two liters of water a day. I find it so hard to do. I just don't remember to drink. So I thought, what if I had a little tracker on every single day that I color in when I drink each glass of water? So I'm gonna try this out. So I had this stamp made and I'm gonna stamp that on each day of the week. And then I designed it so that like little ice, the little ice um, blocks in the glass are representative of a glass each day. So um, yeah, so there's eight glasses in one day. I'm gonna color an ice cube each time I drink a glass of water. I hope that makes sense. Um, and I really hope it's gonna help me to get hydrated and yeah, stop, stop just, you know, feeding my body nothing but tea. I'm just really stoked to be able to use this stamp because it feels really good. <laughs> And this is the point where I actually realized that I wrote the dates in wrong. And this is not the first time it's happened. I don't know why I can't get these first dates right in my setups. So now I have to fix it. So it didn't work out too bad, but I just used a bit of washi tape and a bit of magic white pen to fix it all up. 
And I just want to take this opportunity while I'm flipping back through the setup to thank my Patreon subscribers. They are a huge support for me and really mean that I can continue to do this videos for my channel. So I really appreciate their support. And so thanking my newest patrons, Renee, Debbie, Becca, Stephanie, Wendy, Tilly, and Kathy and Michaela. Thank you guys so much for your support. It means the world to me. I hope I pronounced all your names correctly. And if anyone else would like to jo join the gang over on Patreon, uh, please check out the link down the description box and you can sign up to get more behind the scenes content, bullet journal theme printables um, and artwork. And, and then I've also started some tutorials as well. So yeah, you can sign up for as little as $2 a month and it really helps to support the channel and my work. So thank you and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning about Yemen and come back next week for the weekly setup where we'll discover a little bit more and I'll also reveal the country options for June. So I'll catch you then. Have a great week. I'll see you soon. Bye.